So recently we went over and took a tour of the Marjorie Rollins house in, it's a state park in Florida, in Central Florida, and she was the author, Pulitzer Prize winning author, of The Yearling and the Cross Creek. And this is basically the tour that we took, along with heading over to the restaurant named in her honor called The Yearling, and having some very good gator. So come <laughs> along. Her book, Cross Creek, was about the rural community uh, that was around her farm. Uh, very rural community back in the uh, 40s, 30s, and 40s of Central Florida. And this home was also like her gathering place of all of her famous author friends came through. Hemingway came through on his way to Key way in and out of Key West several times. Uh, Fitzgerald was uh, another Robert one. Robert Frost was yes. another one. And even Gregory Peck stayed there when they were filming the movie Cross Creek, which was based on the book. She wrote eight books and numerous short stories about the Florida culture while she was living here. Um, it started out that her first husband wanted to move here to own the property and and farm. Is it farming oranges? I, farm, I guess it would oranges. be farming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, Florida just wasn't for him. So they divorced, apparently on good terms. He went back, and it was at her divorce party. Yes, she had a divorce party in the 30s, 40s, <laughs> uh, that she met what would become her second husband. The barn that you just saw is not the original barn, but is an exact replica of what she had when she lived here. And the tenant house on property, too, is not the same one, but it is period correct. But her, her home is, is actually the, the home, and the furnishings in her home were actually her furnishings. A lot of times when you visit these homes, it's furnishings from the period just replaced in there. These were her furnishings. Some of the workers on her farm lived in this tenant house, and uh, when she passed away, she left it to her most, uh, the words they used were beloved workers. Uh, Martha and Will Mickens, and they lived there until they both passed away. In the uh, 60s. Another beloved tenant was Idella Parker, who she called the perfect maid. Uh, she worked for Marjorie for 10 years. She's also the one, as they were restaging the house with her furniture, told them exactly where the furniture was placed. So when you take the tour and you go in, you see the, the furniture in the exact spot that Marjorie had it in. Typical cracker architecture. Uh, it's built up off the ground about two feet on pilings. That allowed air circulation underneath so that the cool air could come up through the floorboards during the summertime. It had windows with screens all the way around. Cracker homes usually have porches on all four sides. Very tall ceilings inside, usually 10, sometimes even 12 foot ceilings to allow for more air circulation. The original structure, the one here in the front, was built in 1884. It was a four room home at that time. The rear structure, which houses the kitchen and the dining room, was built around 1900. And then the two-room structure over here to the right of the house was actually a structure that was down the road as a tenant house. The folks who lived in the house, the Armstrong family, uh, around 1925 had a couple teenage daughters at the time and they were wanting more room. So Mr. Armstrong bought the two-room house over here and had it rolled down the uh, road out here on big logs pulled by a team of mules. And they attached that to the right-hand side of the house. And then all, this, all three structures were tied together with a breezeway. Right. This was Marjorie's favorite room in the home. Oh. You can see why. Mm. When they bought the home, the porch wasn't nearly this big, but they added to it, pushed it out, and made it you know, a lot more livable out here. Charles, her first husband, built this writing table. This is the original writing table that Marjorie wrote on right here. Uh, the top is made out of uh, hard pine wood, and the base there is a palm tree. He also built the chairs, and he covered them with deer hide from a deer that he had shot. 
The typewriter is a, uh, a replica, or uh, it's like the typewriter that you would have wrote on out here, the same air. And you notice a little bed over here where she could take an afternoon nap, or maybe even sleep out here in the summertime if, it's, if it got too hot in the house. I can just picture Marjorie sitting at that typewriter's pecking away. She said she'd often work eight, 12 hours a day, and some days were just torture for her to write. She would only get a few sentences, the next morning she'd probably scratch out half the words of those. That did not come easy. In the original 1884 house, this was two rooms. Marjorie and Charles took the center wall out to make it this nice big living room here. The kitchen was probably located over there because they cooked over the fire, and the wood was stored in that big closet there to the left of the fireplace. Marjorie used the fireplace to store her wood as well, but the top of the fireplace, she put shelves to store her fire water. So she used to laugh and say, I keep my firewood on the bottom of the closet, and my fire water on the top. This was during Prohibition, so it was very hard to, uh, to get uh, liquor at that time. And in fact, she bought a lot of moonshine from her friends over in the big scrub. She would put the moonshine in oak barrels and let it age in that closet there. In fact, she had a trap door in the top of it there where she could put the barrels up top and uh, you know, let it age from nine months or so and produce a bourbon type. type. Let's start with some of the books here in the cabinet first. What we've done here is arrange in chronological order all of Marjorie's major publications. Uh, her first publication, 1931, was Jacob's Ladder. It was a short story, and it was based off Tim and Flory, as Judy told you earlier. Uh, Dow Youngin also was kind of based off the uh, off Tim and uh, or off of Flory there. South Moon Under is the book we said that was based off her time with the Finney family in 1931. And it was her first major success. Uh, she received $6,000 uh, from the Scribner Publishing Company for the rights to that book. Uh, Golden Apples was not very uh, popular. She didn't do real well. But then along came The Yearling, written in 1938. It immediately became a bestseller in, in 1938. And in 1939, she won the Pulitzer Prize for Literature for The Yearling. MGM purchased the movie rights to the uh, movie on, also in 1938, and uh, the movie began production in 1942. The little books in the middle there were made for the servicemen during World War II. They took three of her books, uh, South Moon Under, The Yearling, and Cross Creek, and shrunk them down in size for the GIs to carry in their backpacks or in their fatigues. And in fact, in Cross Creek, there's a chapter called Our Daily Bread, where she describes some of the uh, recipes that she used here at Cross Creek. The servicemen loved those and wrote her over 700 letters uh, describing or thanking her for those, those stories in there. And in fact, that, that inspired her to write Cross Creek Cookery uh, late, late in 1942. She took some of those recipes and put them in a cook cookbook. When the house was finally wired for electricity. It was new to, obviously, as you can imagine, everybody that had not had electricity before, so the bulbs Marjorie felt were too bright. So she took ordinary kitchen bowls, painted them white, and hung them to cover up the bulbs so that it would just project light upward. So that was how she dealt with the bright brightness of the bulbs and the new electricity. Marjorie had one of the first indoor bathrooms in this part of the country, and when it was done, she threw a party in it to celebrate it, and she put all the booze in the bathtub, she put flowers in the toilet so no one could use it anyways, and they all celebrated that she had indoor plumbing and was one of the first. I'm not sure that that's as much as a celebration. I guess the booze was a celebration, but it's like... And I go outside to the outhouse but, well, with the yeah. screen door on it. We'll yeah, see later, there's a screen door on the outhouse because Florida, I think. Yeah. Marjorie 
would have dinner parties that would last hours, and she always sat at the head of the table. And it wasn't because she felt important, it's my house, it's anything. It's because the head of the table looked out the window and had the view of the outhouse, and she didn't want any of her guests to have that view. Before Marjorie had her indoor plumbing, this was actually her shower house. And she said it was great in the summer, but really cold in the winter. Marjorie added this carport in around the mid 1940s for her 1946, I believe it was a Packard. This is the Yearling restaurant and it's in honor of her book. Obviously the Yearling that made the area kind of more popular and it's Florida cracker style food and the must try there, the, everything that we had was good. Yes. But you have to try the orange, sour orange pie. That's an old, old Florida thing of what they used to do with some of the sour oranges. Um, it's very similar to key lime pie, but orange and so good. If you've never had it, it's worth a stop almost just for the sour orange pie. Yes, just for the sour orange pie. <laughs> And the decor in the yearling is, I don't even know how you'd describe the decor in the yearling. I mean, as you can see here, <laughs> eclectic? it's eclectic for sure. <laughs> it's part bar, part restaurant, part bookstore. Part library. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they do have several uh, rare editions of the yearling for sale, if that's what you're looking for. Um, and a lot of other random books for sale too. Mm. And a bar and a giant stuffed gator. And if you go into the gift shop, there's mail slots and an old switchboard. So yeah. now I don't, I can't confirm this, but I believe back in the, you know, the 40s and the 50s, that was probably kind of like the center of town. And that's probably mm -hmm. where the mail was delivered. That was the phone switchboard and all that for the few people that probably did have phones back then. Or they brought it in because it's cool, because there was a lot of odd knick-knacky <laughs> type things. <laughs> So it's a really easy stop. It's a really quick stop. Um, it's it's near Micanopy. If you're hitting Micanopy, mm -hmm. did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it's definitely somewhere that I would suggest stopping just because it is a nice laid back little thing to do. A lot of Florida cracker history within that entire area. The mm -hmm. house itself and then the restaurant. We had the gator sandwich there and it was very good. <laughs> sour, sour orange pie doesn't look like much, but you, you have to try it. It is so good. Um, so next week we'll be bringing you um, more of a military history with Camp Landing. Uh, it's a little bit out of our normal, but we got the chance to take a tour with the, the historian here on base. And there was just a lot of history here with the fact that this used to be a German POW camp. And... So if, if you're not into that thing, we'll be back to our normal content after that. But um, it's definitely was interesting for us to take and hopefully you'll find it interesting too. If you've made it this far, <laughs> please hit like and subscribe and YouTube will suggest which video of ours best suits uh, your interests.